Joining us with the latest on business is Greg Fairley. Greg, there's been a good start to the business week with rising volumes. Hi, Hermione. Yes, led by uh, Emirates MBD. More on that in just a moment or two. First to our top business story this evening. Yamaha has posted a statement on the Dubai Financial Market website saying it intends to sell a number of treasury shares or stock that's been bought back and is available for possible resale. The company says its board approved a proposal to sell 200,000 shares that the company bought in 2008. No further details were given. Imar Properties is the developer of the world's tallest tower in Dubai, the Burj Khalifa. Today, the DFM advanced to its highest in almost four months, leading gains in the Middle East, brought about after the United Arab Emirates joined London's FTSE Group as an emerging market, spurring demand for local assets. This will take real effect, though, from tomorrow. Dubai stocks rose 2.2% to 1,683 points from trading worth 431 million dirhams, with Imar Properties the only stock trading more than 100 million worth. Emirates MBD rose 2.6% to 2 dirhams and 80 fills. Abu Dhabi stocks rose almost 1% to close at 2,632 points from trading worth 187 million dirhams. Aldar Properties, the most actively traded stock up, was nearly by 3% to 2 dirhams and 48 fills from 79 million dirhams worth of deals. Well, time now to look at the all-important numbers and here come Sunday's Markets and Currencies. UAE banks will turn down old checks signed after the end of March. The move comes as part of new rules on the enforcement of more secure checks that will be mandatory by the end of this year. Banks in the UAE have already stopped issuing old checkbooks, which they're replacing with ones that are compatible with new central bank guidelines. These include the checks being thermochromic sensitive and chemically sensitive. Well, today we hit the streets to find out if you're happy with the services provided by banks in the UAE. Here's what you had to say. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy on that because they're fast services and also those uh, loans. Services, yeah, it's okay, it's fine, very fine. Because I'm, I'm comparing in my home country, so other than that, it's, it's, uh, it's okay, it's fine. As for my bank, it's, it's good. Yeah, I have no complaints. Yeah, because I just transferred to one bank, so right now I'm happy because they have given me what I wanted. Yeah. Um, I don't know next what will happen because, uh, of course, uh, interest rates will be accumulating and whatever, then that's the time. The bank service in, in UAE, I think it's better than any other country nowadays. Because I have banking, so I have experience in many countries like India, Canada, other, other places also. But this is the best place I have seen. Uh, right now I don't face any problems, so why didn't you think it's worked cool? Uh, but sometimes, uh, like the, uh, the timings, it a little bit hurts. The level of occupied office space in Dubai has increased by close to 14 million square feet over the past two and a half years from the end of 2007 to the middle of this year, which represents an increase of around 70% in occupied stock. A new report by Jones Lang LaSalle leads to an office market turnaround. Jones Lang LaSalle, the global real estate investment and advisory firm, predicts commercial real estate vacancies will decline rapidly in the more central business areas of Dubai, which include DIFC, Burj Khalifa and TCOM areas, and return to sustainable levels within the next few years. 
Office real estate often goes through periods of supply outstripping demand. The experience of cities like Shanghai, Singapore and Moscow has shown that vacancies do not remain at excessive levels for sustained periods and vacancies for office space in central locations typically falls to more sustainable and balanced levels within two to four years. A lot of press comment has been uh, coming backwards and forwards over the last year and a half or so about the oversupply situation um, within the Dubai office property market. Uh, During that time, we've seen incredibly strong demand growth, uh, which has culminated in take-up of uh, between 50 and 70 percent. Jones Lang LaSalle's latest MENA house view found that Dubai has the fourth largest supply per capita of any major global city behind only New York, Paris and London, with roughly 34 square feet of office space per person. The growth in occupied stock um, has outperformed any other major um, financial district that we've seen over the course of the last year and a half. To have something in the order of 60 to 70 percent of uh, additional occupied uh, property on top of what there was prior to the global financial uh, crisis is, is incredible. While total occupied office space in Dubai increased by almost 14 million square feet between December 2007 and June 2010, the same period shows supply expanding by twice this level, with around 28 million square feet of additional space becoming available. The office supply per capita is larger than one would normally expect, uh, but as our report says, um, there is a, there, there's certainly a two-tier market developing between those uh, properties under single ownership of a, an international quality in good, well-located CBD areas versus more peripheral uh, office property that's being developed outside of those core areas. Experts believe that if supply and demand ratios are carefully monitored in the future, vacancies in the global market, including Dubai, will benefit. Now you're up to date with the latest business and finance. Hermione. Thanks, Greg.